It's his power to doubt, his uh, rational capacity to question. He transforms his power to doubt into a lack of conviction. Our rational desire to question turns into apathy, the inability to believe in anything. Not to chain himself to a truth becomes for him not wishing to commit his own self to the creation of spiritual values. So to withhold assent from any kind of truth, uh, which is a value in idealism, uh, beginning with Descartes, uh, becomes a desire not to be committed uh, to any value at all. It results in what Nietzsche would call nihilism, right? uh, a lack of spiritual values. And uh, the absolute ap apathy, lack of commitment of self to uh, anything. Under these conditions, Levinas goes on, Sincerity becomes impossible and puts an end to all heroism. Uh, without committing yourself to uh, the creation of spiritual values, if those values are determined by biology, then sincerity becomes impossible as does heroism. That's, I think, a fascinating claim. He continues, Civilization is invaded by everything that is not authentic, by a substitute that is put at the service of fashion and of various interests. In other words, Levinas is saying liberalism, uh, especially um, with this new kind of materialism becomes a kind of universal skepticism that results in the loss of any conviction or genuine uh, spiritual value. And that without conviction and commitment to spiritual value, uh, we lose sincerity, heroism, Sincerity and heroism are the foundation of uh, civilization. And without sincerity and heroism, without conviction and commitment to spiritual values, uh, civilization becomes uh, invaded by the inauthentic um, and we replace spiritual values uh, with whatever is at the service of fashion or various interests. Right? Uh, so I think we can think about this. Um, well, let's read one more line here. Um, I've written some notes, and I'll read these. Right? So freedom leads to doubt, to lack of conviction, to unbelief. And this uh, <clears throat> makes it impossible to commit to decide to stake yourself, and thus it is impossible to be sincere or heroic. You have to stake yourself on something, on a belief. And everything inauthentic gains currency in civilization. Right? Without uh, that um, conviction in values, the inauthentic becomes as valuable uh, as the authentic. We lose the ability to distinguish uh, the authentic and inauthentic. Uh, right, uh, you know, I, I, I don't want to go down this rabbit hole either, but we can certainly think about this in terms of um, you know, how effective uh, the you know, claims about fake news are, um, as well as the efficacy of fake news, right? People not knowing what to believe, uh, who the heroes are, uh, who has true conviction, um, the, the loss uh, in our ability to discern the truth um, is uh, 
a part of what um, Levinas is talking about here, right? So, um, yeah. On 70, he goes on. Such a society loses living contact with its true ideal of freedom and accepts degenerate forms of the ideal. It does not see that the true ideal requires effort and instead enjoys those aspects of the ideal that make life easier. Right? So uh, what is the true ideal of liberalism? It's freedom. Right? But because we've lost conviction, uh, because we no longer um, really care uh, or skeptical universally, uh, we don't stake our identities on this freedom. We don't genuinely believe in it. And the true ideal of freedom degenerates, right? it begins to disintegrate. And we come to identify instead with forms of that ideal uh, that are merely expedient, that are easy, that are convenient. Right? So no longer is freedom in liberal society about um, freedom of religion. Right? Who cares about uh, the right of um, Muslims not to be harassed when they go to an airport? That's, who cares, uh, right? Um, the freedom that we care about is uh, the freedom to choose between 15 different brands of toothpaste. Uh, right? We lose our sense of what the ideal actually means. Uh, this is what Levinas is talking about, right? and so, uh, and in that example right there, we see how Nazism begins to insinuate itself into, um, into liberalism. He goes on, continuing on page 70, And yet the new type of truth cannot renounce the formal nature of truth and cease to be universal. In vain is truth my truth, in the strongest sense of this possessive pronoun for it must strive toward the creation of a new world. So truth of the body as blood, and identity as biology, is in conflict with truth as universal. And so Levinas asks, uh, I think, what is the most essential question here in this essay, which is, how is universality compatible with racism? This is the question for Kant. This is the question that we have been um, sort of in the background thinking about uh, for the last month. Uh, and he says, the answer to be found in the logic of what first inspires racism involves a basic modification of the very idea of universality. Universality must give way to the idea of expansion. So, how is universality compatible with racism? It's no longer uh, that, well, let me read what I've written here. Universality comes to be understood not as uh, ideas that are propagated, that is to say, not as ideas that uh, are acceptable to all. Universality instead becomes a force that expands. Universality is what has the power to expand. It's a very Nietzschean idea, and he's going to um, attribute it to Nietzsche, right, or a misreading of Nietzsche. Uh, expansion is not a priori universal. It is not formal necessity or natural. 
It is that which is capable of forcing everything under its aegis, of forcing conformity. The universal is not a priori, it's not a formal necessity, it is that which has the power to force everything to conform to it. Universality becomes that which has the power to dominate all else. Levinas writes, the propagation of an idea thus creates a community of masters. Right? Uh, if you can master an idea, uh, then we have a community of masters. This is a kind of platonic understanding of universality. Right? 